swords of Saint Trina. What can we say about them without putting you to sleep? Straight swords are the bread and butter of every Souls game in existence. You can use them either with a shield for the famous sword and board, or you can use two at the same time to gain access to one of the best movesets in the game. There are many different straight swords in Elden Ring, with only two of them being special little snowflakes and possessing status effect build up. The Crystal Rotten Sword, which inflicts Scarlet Rot, and the Saint Trina Sword, which inflicts sleep. This can be amazing for some PvE enemies, almost trivializing some boss fights. But as some of you may know, sleep can be quite problematic in this game when talking about PvP. So this little soporific tampon is what we're going to focus on today. The Sword of St. Trina is a straight sword that scales with strength, intelligence and dexterity. It can be found early in the game at the Forsaken Ruins, near the Rotview Balcony site of Grace, located in the Great State of Ohio. To wield it, you need a minimum intelligence requirement of 14, in addition to the strength and dexterity requirements. This can be a bit misleading, as it may lead you to believe that it is primarily an intelligence weapon in the long run. However, when you reach the maximum upgrade level, the Sword of St. Trina actually scales mainly with dexterity, making it technically a dexterity weapon, as if dexterity didn't have enough options already. As mentioned earlier, the sword has an innate sleep buildup of 66 points, which can be increased to 136 points using its Ash of War, Mists of Slumber. This is where the weapon becomes somewhat problematic. For those unfamiliar, sleep is a status effect in Elden Ring that puts the enemy, well, uh, to sleep. Duh. When inflicted with this effect, one of two things can happen. Enemies will either fall asleep and remain stunned for a maximum of 60 seconds or until hit, or they will simply shake their heads and continue fighting. However, when you, the gamer, are inflicted with sleep, you will lose FP and be stunned in place for three seconds. While this may not sound too detrimental in PvE, it becomes a different matter entirely in PvP. As I have mentioned in a previous video, it is important to note that Elden Ring's netcode can sometimes result in being hit during roll animations. While you will not take damage in such situations, it is worth mentioning that if the weapon has a status effect, you will experience status buildup. For a more detailed explanation of this phenomenon, I suggest watching our video on parrying, which delves deeper into this topic. In the case of status effects like poison or rot, you will simply become poisoned or rotted without any further consequences. For status effects like bleed or frost, which briefly stun you upon infliction, you will be interrupted in your role animation, but will not sustain any damage. However, when it comes to sleep or madness, well, that's a different story. You will be stunned and unable to move for three seconds, leaving you vulnerable to enemy attacks. However, that's not the worst part of the whole ordeal. You see, unlike sleep's distant relative, good old madness, being put to sleep allows the enemy to land two consecutive attacks that you cannot roll out of, resulting in a devastating true combo. Moreover, when wielding Swords of Saint Trina, using two of them simultaneously provides one of the most powerful movesets in the game, the Power Stanced Straight Swords. This allows for fast and incredibly strong strikes, especially when combined with the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, which amplifies the damage from the multiple hits you continuously inflict, and no amount of poise can withstand Power Stanced Straight Swords. As demonstrated in some of these clips, even a brief moment of slumber can lead to a game over. This build is particularly effective when facing opponents with high latency, as every hit you manage to land, including hits during roll animation, will have an impact on the match. This will put immense pressure on the enemy, thanks to the sleepy sticks, as they watch that lilac meter slowly build up. I highly recommend opting for a full dexterity build, aiming for around 70 points for a level 137 character. This will maximize your damage output and provide flexibility in case the enemy starts to counter your sleep strategy. In such situations, you can easily switch to another weapon and whoop their ass with that. Focus on roll catching as if the enemy had no latency, allowing the sleep buildup to take effect. Once it does, Brutally slap them with a two-hit true combo for maximum pain. Repeat this process until you force the enemy to switch their breathing mode from automatic to off. 
So by now, this build would seem to cover all corners, right? I mean, hits through roll animations do sound very dangerous. But of course, as everything in life tarnished, this build does have counters. And no, it is not coffee. <laughs> Firstly, equipping sleep-resistant items can make it difficult for St. Trina's to put you to sleep, especially if Mists of Slumber is not active. Items like the Clarifying Horn Charm or Spiral Horn Shield can significantly reduce the sleep buildup, making it pretty hard to the St. Trina's user to put you to sleep. It is important to practice hard swapping to switch to these items when necessary. Furthermore, the main issue with the St. Trina swords is their extremely short range. They're like tiny little soporific toothpicks. They have the third shortest range among all straight swords, and this becomes problematic when trying to whiff punish attacks as running attacks with power stance straight swords are pretty garbage. For the record, this is what a good running attack looks like. Instead, you have to rely on neutral R1S to punish opponents, which may not always be possible, against certain weapons. For instance, in this clip, Ender is facing an opponent wielding a curved greatsword. Due to the short range of the St. Trina swords, there is no opportunity to land an attack on the curved greatsword user, as they are never left vulnerable due to their long range and fast recovery. Therefore, it is advisable to use long and fast weapons against the St. Trina swords to have a better chance of success at beating the crap out of Sleepy McNutt. I would have been able to outspace that on Carrions. Again, I would have been able to outspace that on Nobles. And I would have been able to outspace that in most other straight swords paired. Also, something very important to mention is that if you jump just before getting put to sleep, the stun will be nullified. <laughs> As some final thoughts, I have very polarised opinions when regarding this build. On paper, it's very good as sleep can be nasty, but the short range makes it quite difficult to fight certain setups. And unlike other setups that use sleep, like the Arcane Ripple Crescent Halberd, not only the success rate is lower, but the fights feel way more uphill when using St. Trina's than when using the Halberd. It is still a sleep build, though, which is unanimously despised by the community. But this specific build. Ta mal. Pero no está ta mal. A little game before we end the video, tarnished, just by its base stats alone. What weapon is the one on screen? Leave your answer in the comments below and the winner will be featured in the next video. If you enjoyed this one though, feel free to leave a like, a comment and share it with friends. Consider subscribing to Only Way Fu for more videos like this. Be sure to bathe in sunlight at least a little bit today and as always, thanks for watching.